So hi uh, everyone, welcome to the WS2 Streaming Integrator webinar. So today we'll be talking about moving data using real-time streaming. Uh, my name is Ramidu De Silva. I'm an associate technical lead in the Streaming Integrator product. And also here with me, uh, I have uh, Lasanta Samarakon, who is a senior software engineer who is working in the Streaming Integrator product as well. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can add it in the questions tab. And also we'll be sending the recording and the slide to all the registered uh, people uh, via emails. And also uh, uh, let's get started. And uh, so uh, the agenda is about uh, like we'll be briefly discussing about WS2 streaming integrator. And if you guys want to know about more about uh, WS2 streaming integrator, we have uh, done a webinar on uh, empowering enterprise integration with streaming, uh, which is uh, posted on YouTube. So you can check that as well. And then we'll be moving on to uh, moving, discuss about the moving data with uh, real time streaming. And then we have pre uh, prepared two demos on file processing and a demo on CDC. And then we'll have a, a question and answer session after the two demos. So uh, when it comes to uh, streaming, so uh, it's more like WS2 streaming integrator can connect to anything and do all those transformations. Uh, so mainly, <coughs> sorry. So the streaming integrator can be connected to like streaming messaging systems such as Kafka, RabbitMQ, and maybe software sensors and to the cloud and also to traditional sources such as databases and files. And all those things can be taken out, taken into the streaming integrate, integrator as streams. And we can do this transformations and maybe enriching. And if we want to filter some data, we can do that. And also on top of that, we can aggregate the data. And also uh, we can check any correlations exist in this data using sequences and patterns uh, using the streaming integrator. And also while doing that, uh, we can uh, get those data stored into event tables and also the aggregations will be also stored into uh, databases and the user have the ability to uh, fetch data on demand via the provided uh, REST APIs. And <clears throat> after that, uh, those uh, transformed, all those uh, transformed data can be published into the desired endpoints such as uh, softwares, cloud, or databases, files, or messaging systems as well. And also, we the streaming integrator can trigger integrations uh, using the micro integrator as well. So, the main two things uh, when it comes to uh, streaming data. So, basically, uh, a stream is more like a continuous flow of data, which uh, carries large volume with high velocity, and the streaming integrator does whatever necessary to take care of the fault tolerance and the statefulness when doing those processing. So uh, the first thing is uh, it is integrating data streams with various destinations. So as in uh, there will be some sources that generate streams of data and the downstream consumers expect streams in different formats, maybe in JMS, maybe in aggregated format, maybe in uh, maybe via Kafka and the streaming integrator can integrate in a way those data in the way that consumer wants and the next common thing is uh, the integrating static sources in real time so the most common thing the most static uh, sources which are people are common with is uh, uh, databases and file systems so people needs to write uh, read files and data and listen to database events in real time and generate data streams so over here in this case, the, these static sources act as real-time data sources with, and that's where the streaming ETL comes into play. As in ETL, it's extract, transform, and load. It's more like moving data from one place to another. Uh, so that's where this uh, moving data comes in with uh, real-time streaming. So uh, 
this slide mentioned why we are not using the traditional methods for moving data and uh, it's, it's mainly it's because the data has to be processed by batches so when the data set or the, the data data gets larger the larger number of resource allocation is needed in order to do the processing and also the alerts and notifications won't be in real time and also the decisions cannot be taken on the process of moving data so if those alerts notifications and the decisions has to be taken it has to process those data all over again and then only the alerts and the notification cannot be can can be generated and sent to sent out to the desired people and also now today's systems often included real-time streaming data so that's why the traditional methods of batch processing for moving data is not very capable of uh, doing today's processing so that's when the streaming etl with wso2 streaming integrate comes in so when doing the streaming etl only the uh, the resource usage only depends on the data rate hence it's very less compared to batch processing and also alerts and notification ha can happen in real time so as you can see in my uh, first slide so whenever an input stream comes into streaming integrator there can be transformations and aggregations can uh, compute and also there can be correlations that can compute on the data and generate notifications and alerts so that will be based on whatever the data comes in in real time uh, so the data the most uh, thing that can uh, will be happen when doing real time streaming is the data will be available in real time for processing and aggregating and for making decisions so this is a uh, like a high level overview of uh, what we can do in uh, w2 streaming integrator so here you can see there are different formats of sources and there can there are, those sources have different types of uh, formats of data and those data can be converted into a, a common a data stream using the data mapping layer inside the streaming integrator and that data stream can go through whatever the filtering conditions and whatever the transformation that we have implemented via Siddhi and then convert it back to whatever the target endpoint desires and push it to those target endpoints. So that's how this uh, real-time streaming has is happening. Uh, so uh, we, we have this next slide on supported features for real-time ETL. So, Lasanta, uh, can you continue on these slides? Yeah, uh, yeah uh, thank you, Ramit. Uh, so, uh, in this case, uh, we, uh, let's see what are the supported features we have for real-time ETL in our streaming integrated solutions. Uh, so, the first thing is that uh, we have a web-based IDE for developing uh, streaming data flows. That means you can uh, write streaming ap applications using this web-based IDE. So, it has uh, several features available, like uh, you can auto-generate stream definitions, like uh, you can pro you can uh, give a specific database scheme, or you can point to a database, or you can point to a different uh, file which contains a csv json or xml or something like that and then you can you can auto generate a stream definition and also you can uh, and also we have the drag and drop functionality uh, that means uh, a designer designer ui uh, to develop a city application that means you can either write the application if you prefer to write code then you can write that application or else if you are not that much into the coding then you can have a designer view where you can drag and drop and, and drag and drop those items and you can connect them and you can uh, ultimately you can develop a CD application using that designer so uh, basically you can have a look on these uh, features especially on this uh, web-based ide when we are doing the demo uh, and also uh wso streaming integrator is uh, basically powered by uh, IO, which is an uh, ws2 uh, w another ws2 uh, project and it is 
actually uh, recognized by uh, cloud native computing foundation as a streaming and messaging system so that is and uh, and the cdio is uh, used by uh, many it is uh, heavily uh, backed by the community and also we have about uh, 60 plus connectors in the streaming integrator to connect to various sources and things and also uh, to uh, to modify the uh, to transfer messages easily so you can have a csv or json or some database uh, data from a database then you can convert into a json or xml or something like that a much easier way and also the uh, and also it is uh, highly highly resilient uh, we have the state persistence within our uh, streaming integrator where are you where we persist the state of the current uh, system system and then if there's something happened then we can restore from that uh, restore from that uh, checkpoint and then uh, we can proceed so something like that so that is uh, the streaming integrator is actually a high uh, resilience and also we have much uh, we have tools which uh, easier the deployment of synth apps like from the editor uh, you can uh, export the synth apps to a kubernetes to your kubernetes cluster or as a docker image and also we have that uh, set of docker images uh, available as well so uh, that makes that uh, streaming integrator is easily deployable in your environment uh Rabbi, can you go to the next slide yeah uh, so let's see what are the uh, features which, which are coming on uh, coming next on the streaming integrator so we have uh we are working on a uh, uh, release release uh, now and uh, there are set of features that are uh, on our roadmap uh, which will uh, coming uh, in a few weeks few weeks time so like uh, we have a real time statistics uh, using uh, grafana so here you can uh, see a screenshot of that one so we are providing a statistics that monitoring dashboard feature for uh, database operations and also file systems and likewise so you can see the statistics in your uh, in your grafana deployment and also we have a uh, we are working on a streaming etl task wizard which is actually uh, allow you to create as uh, etl uh, etl task in much simpler way using a wizard kind of uh, uh, using a wizard actually uh, so that is a uh, another another feature that is that is coming on and also we have that error management and event replay uh mechanism also coming on that means that if there's something happen with your event then uh, we are we can uh, then you can uh, uh, check that and you can replay the replay the event so you can make sure that all the events are processed with the new uh, streaming integrator so uh, those are the major features which are coming um in a few weeks time so uh, i think uh, now we can uh, jump into the uh, demonstration probably it is uh, up to you okay thank you Lassan. Uh, so uh, the first demo is about uh, file processing and inserting into a database so <clears throat> i will explain the scenario briefly so we have these uh, files file set uh, resides in my desktop so the file source will be re read, read, read reading those files and then using a json mapper because the files are in the data in the file contains in a json format and then it will put to a stream and then uh, it will store it in the rdbms store and also the, an aggregation uh, happens parallelly using this sweep uh, production stream and then it will store it in the DB as well. So uh, let's go to the demo. So I will be uh, using the design view uh, to for this demo. So let's first uh, stop this CD app. Okay. Uh, so uh, we I have created a database called ETL demo, and let's see these tables are empty. Okay, so uh, let's go to the design view and first let's uh, drag a stream. Uh, 
uh, and then uh, we have the capability of generating stream definition as uh, Lasanta mentioned. So let's get it from a file. And uh, here we have the sample event JSON. And let's name the stream as uh, Sweet Production Stream. And the enclosing element will be events. So as you can see, the sample event contains in the event. So that's why we have entered over here. So let's generate. And then <clears throat> we have the three attributes auto generated over here. And let's submit. And then let's uh, put a source over here uh, to connect to the sweet production stream. And this will be our file source. Uh, OK. Then uh, let's uh, have the directory URI. So I have, for my ease of copy pasting, uh, I have added it over here. Let's copy paste this URL. Okay, then the mode will be we will reading line by line. So our sample uh, file is like this. So we'll be reading line by line from here, and we'll make tail into false. And action after process, we'll be moving the file. And if there are any failures, we'll move the file as well on the move. Moving location will be uh, file slash processed, and the uh, move after failure will be uh, file slash failure. And uh, since uh, we have the JSON data inside the file source, uh, the file file, we have to select this JSON, and also we have to give the enclosing element as event. And that's it. Uh, we and submit this. So now we need the, need the table definition. So we have to give a table and also a projection. So first we have to connect these things over here and then let's define the table. Okay. So we give a name to, uh, to the table and then the attributes. And the store type will be RDBMS. So the JDBC URL will be this one. So the ETL underscore demo, and the username and the password. And the drive name would be this. Uh, okay, so that will be our table definition. Then we have to write the query which inserts the sweet production stream event, which is read by the file source into the database. So, so we'll be selecting all the attributes which comes to the file source into the table. Okay. And also, uh, I'm going to add an aggregation as well. So if a user wants to do some aggregation, this is how we can do it. So let's say a uh, user want to know per second what was the rate of uh, file events that was inserted into, the, into this DB. So this can be Used it, used it as well, or this can be used as an other for other use cases as well. So over here we give a name. And we use the same store over here, the same database in database instance. So indexing plugin we skip this, skip those for now. And the projection will be user defined projection. So this is where we say what are the stuff that we need to put when what are the information that we need to store when doing the aggregation. So for now we'll say symbol 
since we want the count we have to with the count function and uh, let's say we want to test total count and also if, if needed we, we can group by the attributes uh, we group by symbol but uh, there won't be one symbol because our file contains only one symbol which is the wso2 and we can aggregate using by seconds and uh, minutes and hours but for the for the time being only the seconds can be shown and let's submit now let's go to the source view and also for the ease of debugging let's uh, get a log uh, this these won't be needed in the production case this is just for the uh, development purposes okay so so we here we have the source that we uh, configured it, it has the it will be read from this new location and after that it will be moved to the process location as uh, you can see uh, there will be the event dot text in the new location and the process is uh, empty and also uh, we have the jdbc urls as configured and the things okay let's uh, start this cp app okay so the file content has been read from the file source and this uh, this is the uh, debug logs that i mentioned that i i just added so so here you can see the after the processing the file has been moved to the process location uh, and let's see the table the it contains the events uh, okay that must be It's a small issue over here. Uh, let's check. Let's see. Since those have not been created yet, So let's stop this CP application for a second. So the stream definitions are okay. Okay, let's uh, try to drop these tables once again. And let's 
to do this. Rename this. So we have the new events over here. Okay, let's try this once more. Okay, we have the result over here. Okay, now the tables are available. So there must be must have been a, some small issue. So we have the data in the sweet production table now, uh, which was read from the stream. And also if we select the aggregation, uh, we have to check for underscore seconds. So, so the aggregated count is available over here as well. So you can see, uh, you just saw about how we process the file system, uh, file systems data and how we streamline to insert into a DB. So that's more like the end of my uh, scenario. So uh, I will uh, call Lasanta to get on back with the second scenario. So, uh, Lasanta, can you present your uh, screen? You, you can present your screen as well now. After the, after this, uh, after you describe the second scenario. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ramesh. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, here is the scenario which I'm going to uh, present. Uh, so in this case, uh, what we are going to demonstrate is uh, basically how we can do change data capturing with uh, WSL streaming integrator and then move those uh, change data from the database to uh, another set of files and then uh, finally we can uh, see the same result within the file so uh, here is the scenario so uh, in this case uh, we have a, a SQL server uh, with uh, two tables like uh, one is called the products and one, another one called the categories so uh, there can be date, there can be operation insert update and delete operations in the products table and then within our cd application what we are going to do is we are uh, going to have a cdc source which actually listens to the changes within this products table so once a change is de change is detected it can be either insert update or delete then it will be passed uh, into this uh, product input stream and it will contain all the uh, all the columns or the data uh, available like ID, name, category ID, and the quantity. And then in here, what we are doing, going, what we are going to do is we are going to enrich this event event with actual category name instead of this category ID. Then moving that event into a a file. So in this case, actually we will have. A, three file one for insert one for delete and one for update so uh, let's uh, jump into the uh, demonstration so okay uh, so i have a sql server here so still uh, we don't have a database so first let's create the database santa can you share your screen now can you present uh can't you see my screen uh, uh not yet uh, okay okay ah okay okay uh so uh 
you guys got that uh, got the uh, scenario right okay so uh, i'll uh, go again through the scenario what i'm going to present uh, so in this case uh, uh, we have a, a sql server database within the sql server database uh, we have two tables like called products and the categories so uh, there can be uh, there can be uh, data inserted updated or deleted on this uh, products table so what we are going to do here is within the streaming integrator we are going to uh, Cap we are going to listen to these changes from the streaming integrator side using change data capturing. And once a change is detected for the products, ta products table, then what we are going to do is we are we are we are receiving that event that whatever the change data uh, to this stream called product input stream, it will have the whatever the data row which contains the ID name, category ID, and the quantity. So within this the application, what we are going to do is once we are received that uh, change data, change event, then we are going to enrich enrich the same event with the category category name instead of this category ID, and then we are putting that into a product output stream, and this will actually are uh, written into a file in a CSV format. So that is uh, that is the scenario that uh, we are going to implement. So uh, first. Uh, in here i have a sql server database so uh, sql server uh, running on so still there the database and the tables are not there so i'm going to create the database so uh, here i'm going to create a database called sales let's create that one yeah it is already there and uh, now i need to create a table called categories yeah categories table is there so uh, this actually this uh, doesn't contain any uh, data now. So let's uh, put some categories there. Okay, uh, now this categories table contains some uh, data, like there are five rows available. So uh, let's create another table called products. This is the table that we are going to listening on from the streaming integrator side using change data capturing. Okay, I have created that table then what we have to do is we have to enable cdc for the entire database and also for that particular table so now i'm going to enable cdc uh, this is for the uh, sql server microsoft sql server okay uh, now we have enabled cdc so here you can uh, see the uh, result that there's a capture instance has been created for on the uh, on that uh, products table so we can use this to capture the uh, changes from our uh, streaming integrator side okay now uh, the products table actually doesn't contain any record so we are going to add some record we are going to update and delete uh, some records here so those changes will be detected from the streaming integrator so uh, now I'll show you. Uh, now my streaming integrator is up. So I'll uh, I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you how the uh, uh, the application will look like. So in here I have already created the the application. So uh, uh, let's go through on that. Okay, uh, here is the Siddhi application. Let's go to the uh, design view so it is much easier for you to understand. Okay, uh, so in here, uh, you can see there are three flows actually. This is the first flow, which, uh, which is for the inserted records. And this, is one, this one is for the deleted records. And this one is for the updated records. So let's go uh, one by one what uh, we are going to do here. So in this CDC source, this is the one actually listening listening to the change data from the database. Here you can see that we are listening onto that that database, and also here are the cred, uh, credentials, and we are listening on the products table, and we are listening for only the insert operation here. So once a once a new change a new record has been inserted, then 
this CDC source will detect that one and put that into a inserted product input stream. So this will contain this contains all the attributes like ID, name, category ID, and the quantity. Then here we have a category table which is actually pointed to the category table in our database. So in this insert query, this query, what it does is it actually join this join this stream join the event which coming through this stream with the category table and do the enriching here you can see we are get, uh, here we have the p means the actually the uh, stream product stream product event and c means the category table so here we are getting the id from the product event name from there and also category from the category table and the quantity from the product and that event stream and then what we are doing what what we are doing is we are putting that into the inserted product output stream and it will ultimately go to this file sync so this file sync will write that append this event into this file called inserted.csv inserted.csv in csv format so that is how the insert inserts and similar to that one this is the one for deleted here we have we are listening for delete operation and then there's a slight different he, difference here uh, with regard to the insert insert stream in the insert stream we had attributes called id name category id and the quantity but in here we have the before id before name before category id and before quantity this this means this attribute will contain whatever the value that was there because this record has been deleted so these are the these are the attributes these are the values that we had earlier before deleting so that is why that before underscore prefix is there so once uh, we get that record again we are uh, joining that with the category table for for the enriching and then we finally write that into this file sync so in here we have the deleted csc and again it is a map type is csc similar to that one uh, we have in here this is for the update you can see the operation is update in this case we are listening in this case update means we have a current value and also we have some previous values so that is why you can see here we have the id name category id and quantity as well as before id before name before category id and the before quantity so all these before underscore attribute will contain the previous value and rest will contain the current value that is for updates and then again we are enriching that event with the category table and finally write that into a into this file sync that is for the updated csc so that is how the uh, how our c uh, cd app looks like so let's uh, let's start this one okay now i have a started the cd app now it is listening to the events from the uh, database so what we have to do is we have to do some changes in the database and see whether we are getting some values to that file uh, to that uh, to those three files Okay, uh, let's go to this. Uh, go here. This is the uh, query window. I'll get this uh, command console as well. Here I have uh, I have three windows. You can see in here in this output table, output uh, directory we have three files: deleted, inserted, and updated. So I'll tell this uh, inserted file here tail the updated file here and again tail deleted file here now i'm going to do some changes to the data okay uh, so first let's uh, add some uh, now this products table actually doesn't uh, contain any record so i'm going to add a new one Okay, here you can see that new uh, event has been received. 
So this is the uh, within the inserted CSV file. Now we have one record. So let's add another one. So that will again appear in here because it is an insert. Yeah. Okay, let's add uh, the, there are about eight more records to be added. So let's add all those. Yeah, now we got about 10 records here within the inserted CSV. So uh, let's do some, uh, let's update some record. So I'm going to update this uh, fifth uh, record. The quantity is 100, so I'm going to make it 200. And also this uh, seventh record, the quantity is 120. I'm going to make it 150. Let's uh, do one by one. So now it should appear in the updated one. Yeah, we got that one. Yeah, the fifth record, now the current value is 200. So let's add another one. Let's update another one. Yeah, now we got for the seventh record, the current value is 150. It has been updated. So let's delete this uh, number six. So then it should appear within the deleted CSE file. Because that is the one that actually listens to the deleted records. Okay, I have in not the, uh, yeah. Now we got the result. In here in the deleted CSE, that record has been shown. That means that record has been deleted. So let's go and see the products table. Yeah, you can see number five. Now the current value is 200. Number seven, it is 150. And number six is no longer there. So uh, that is how the CS, uh, how, that is how the uh, change data capturing actually works with uh, streaming indicator. So in here, what we have done is we had the CDC, we have the, uh, had the database and we listen to that database. And if there's any change occurred, then we moved, when, then we uh, detected that change and then moved that data, moved that uh, change data into a, into three files called inserted, updated, and deleted in CSV format. So that is how we have moved the data from the database to a file using the change data capturing. Okay, uh, so I think uh, that is uh, it with the uh, demonstration. So if you have any questions, then uh, I think it is the time that uh, we can answer for them. So there was there's one question asking whether what's the performance numbers on the file extension. So it's like uh, we have done a small scenario using file as in like read reading it and whether validating a file content and after that writing into a DB. So for that particular scenario, so we were able to analyze. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, 150 MB files, and uh, we were able to process it under uh, one and a half minutes. Uh, I think uh, so. That's how the performance, as in like it, the performance differs uh, with regards to the transformations or the sequence and the patterns that uh, we have enabled in the CDM. So it's just not the uh, file source or the extensions performance, but it also uh, the performance is uh, affected by the uh, transformation or the processing after the the data is read as well. Uh, so, uh, so also I, I want to let you know that the, just like that the the reading from the file and the database and like we did it uh, vice versa but all the the we can read it from a file and input, you know, put it to a kafka broker we can read it from a file and push it to a jms broker and all sort of stuff is also very similar to this as well as like it, it's more like a similar developer experience for this and yeah so uh, any other questions
Okay, so guys, uh, let's uh, wrap up this webinar. So uh, there's a small uh, question here uh, that you, that you can give us a feedback on this webinar. If you have time, please uh, feed in. And also, uh, if there are any questions, you can email to us uh, using uh, using our emails. We'll be uh, sending you the the slide decks uh, with our emails as well. So uh, then, uh, thank you guys for uh, being attendant uh, in this webinar.